I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I am speaking with several people up for this year's Emmys in the documentary uh, categories as part of our Meet the Experts documentary uh, panel. We have uh, Samantha Stark, the director and producer of Controlling Britney Spears on FX and Hulu. We have Michael Bonfiglio, the director and executive producer of George Carlin's American Dream on HBO. We have Jeannie Alfanfesta, the producer of Lucy and Desi on Amazon Prime. We have Joe Lewis, the producer of 100 Foot Wave on H, also on HBO. And we have Sarah Bernstein, or Bernstein, the uh, producer of We Feed People uh, from National Geographic. Uh, so, uh, as I said, all of your uh, programs uh, received Emmy nominations uh, this year, and I'm curious as to what, and I know all of you are also already Emmy winners, but what was it like to find out that uh, this, the current project that uh, you're working on got that kind of recognition? And uh, I want to go first to Jeannie. Um, I, I got emotional when you, when you said, said that, I remember um talking, you know, texting Amy the day before. Um, just really excited for our team. You know, um, everybody on this panel could attest to that um, uh, documentary filmmaking is a team sport. And, um, you know, we, uh, we, are, we are, you're led by your team captain, which is your director, Amy Poehler is our team captain, had a vision that is, was just beautiful. And She's the only person in the world that I could ever think that could be the right author of this film. Um, and so I was just really, really, um, I, I, I was gonna say the word proud, but proud's not the right word. It's just like it was exuberantly happy, you know, because this is, um, it's, a t it's such a team effort and everybody, as always, like with every single one of these people, every one of your films, they've given it their, their all. And it's, you know, you got your A team and, and, you're, uh, and you're just so, you're pleased for everyone. And we're just pleased that our editor got nominated, that music got nominated, the writing, you know, we're just, it's the, and above all, you know, of course, our, our team leader, Amy, our director. So we're thrilled. And what about you, Michael? Oh, I mean, just to echo what Jean said, I mean, it, you know, documentary filmmaking is absolutely a team sport and, and the nominations were reflections of all the great work that our whole team did. But it was just very um, humbling because so much great work came out this past year. It's strange to be like in competition with these films that are not made meant to be compared to one another. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it was just, just very exciting and humbling. And um, it's just kind of cool to, to be, um, to have your work appreciated by your peers. And what about you, Samantha? Um, yeah, I was thrilled and surprised um, and moved. And I think, you know, we tried to shine a spotlight on this little known conservatorship system and also uh, how poorly we treat women like Britney Spears. And so, the fact that I think the nomination made me moved that people cared about that because uh, conservatorships are meant for the most vulnerable people in our society. Um, and we've treated women like this for so long that I, it was, yeah, very moving that people cared. And Sarah? Um, well, of course, you know, echoing what everybody says about who's thrilled for our team, but also I think for us, it was so wonderful to just further amplify the mission of World Central Kitchen through an Emmy nomination. Um, it was great to have the global, you know, partnership of Nat Geo and the platform of Disney Plus, but I think to have an Emmy, you know, or two Emmy nominations for the film is just, it's just great because it further pumps up mm -hmm. the mission for World Central Kitchen and the awareness. It's just great. And Joe. I mean, you know, my first conversation with Garrett and Nicole, the leads of the show, they just made me promise that we wouldn't make a star film. They just, from the beginning, they wanted to make something that was awards worthy and really great. And, you know, it just felt, I mean, truly, the second I found out, I jumped up and screamed. I was so excited. And, um, you know, for the reasons everyone said, you know, Chris Smith did a ridiculously good job directing this, but the editors, the cinematographers, you know, shooting every day for six months, it's just such a team effort. And then, you know, I look at everything else nominated and it's all so good. And just to be alongside those and those filmmakers, it does not get any better than that. 
And uh, actually, uh, to switch this a bit, as I said, you're all Emmy winners. And I was curious as to what was it like uh, uh, to win uh, you know, that kind of honor. And I want to start with you, Joe, because unlike uh, the rest of the people here, yours is a slightly different thing because you won as a producer of Fleabag in uh, 2019. Uh, thank you, by the way. And uh, I was, and so I wanted to start with you since it was, a, since it's a bit of a different one. What was that experience like for you? You know, it's similar to 100 Foot Wave where, you know, Fleabag at the start, 100 Foot Wave at the start, these things are so small and you don't you are you are not making them because you think people are going to watch them globally you're making them because you love the filmmaker you know these projects start so small and um that project was incredible to have that win and honestly it was just felt when that project really broke out and got recognized and you know phoebe waller bridge like chris smith is just utterly relentless and you know you can never tell them you think it's good enough and it's just great to see that pay off and you know similarly it's just like you're making something about something that's serious but delivering it in a really fun way um it's just truly everything i got into this business to do and work with artists like that with projects with messages like that and you know i can see a really direct connection between fleabag and hundred foot wave as weird as that is to say I also love the Fleabag Emmy win because it produced one of my favorite pictures, and that's at one of the after parties. Uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge <laughs> drinking yeah. a glass of champagne, smoking a cigarette, and her Emmys just surrounding her. <laughs> well, I've got the terrible version of that picture next to Josh uh, Cole, who took it. Mine, mine's blurry, and his is his is perfect. Yeah, it was an amazing, amazing night. And look what it did for guinea pig owners. I, I'm, I was a proud. Those were happy. Yeah. And uh, Samantha, uh, you're a recipient of uh, news, uh, news and Documentary Emmy. What was that experience like? So the very first thing that I did was run out uh, to call my dad um, because he would always talk about that ever since I was little, that he was working so hard so that I could um, go out and uh, accomplish things like that. So I knew he'd be so excited. Um, and it feels actually connected to this because um, when we were filming the first documentary, he died. Um, and so it felt, it feels like it's kind of full circle. Um, and when I was doing interviews about the documentary, I would always wear like a piece of his clothing or um, a ring or something. And I think people thought I just wore men's shirts all the time, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, it feels, it feels very connected and like he's with me. What about you, Michael? Um, it was super fun. Um, one a couple of years ago, uh, along with Sarah Bernstein. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 yeah, and uh, yeah, it was it was fun. I, I had been nominated in the past and not won, and winning is it's a funner time. If you, if you win. But but it's still fun if you don't. Like I don't know, the whole thing is just it's cool. It, it, it's it, it, it was it was neat. I, I, I remember after going up and we got our Emmys and I went to the restroom and um, peed next to Louis Anderson, which was really cool. So that was um, my exciting Emmy story. That's a good one. <laughs> what about you, Jeannie? Well, uh, I won uh, with my partner, Cassidy Hartman, um, at, here at Whitehorse uh, for the Apollo, you know, with Roger Ross Williams and Lisa Cortez. Um, and we were in the height of COVID. So we were uh, in our, uh, you know, catching it on the Zoom, like much similar like we are now. Um, uh, I think we were boiling hot dogs, seriously. And, um, and I was in sweats and um, I called Cassidy and, and uh, cried. And then I called my mom and she couldn't hear very well. She's old, older and she kept saying, the Oscar, <laughs> the Oscar. I was like, no. <laughs> I mean, and it was, we were, everybody was laughing. It was like, you know, uh, um, um, you know, Uma, Uma, uh, Oprah, Oprah, Uma. That's what they were all equating it to in my household. Um, I did, we had a David Letterman off, um, you know, moment there. Um, and uh, um, so we were, um, we, we were very emotional. Um, and uh, like, um, like, like you, we, uh, Samantha, I had uh, lost my dad. Um, when I was really young at, at 26 and um, 
he filled my, he was a, he was a podiatrist, but he was a musician and he played the saxophone and he loved Harlem and they, they were from Brooklyn. Uh, and he uh, would always regale us stories of the Apollo theater. So um, when uh, I it was, you know, this is such a labor of love that we are felt our, our job. And so it was very bittersweet. And I just was sitting there crying. I was just sitting there crying. Just couldn't help it. So yeah, and I'm a sack crying now, so. <laughs> and uh, what about you, Sarah? Because I know you've won uh, several um, for uh, various uh, documentary projects. Uh, what, 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 have, what have those wins been like? Oh, I think as Mike said, it's always great to win. <laughs> it's, like, it's wonderful to be nominated. This is a great time, I think, for all of us. Um, and, you know, winning with Mike and Judd most recently for me, or at least the past a couple of years ago, was a wonderful kind of send off to a, a great career I had with HBO. Um, where, yes, I was involved in some really wonderful films with a lot of these filmmakers who are here today on this panel with us. Um, but, you know, I will say getting nominated for um, for VP People and also to have Imagine nominated for Lucy and Desi was particularly sweet for me. Having um, launched Imagine Docs with Justin Wilkes for Ron and Brian Grazer just four years ago. So it's really great to, to be able to, to celebrate these nominations. That's so true. That's so true. Going back in person, it was so great to go back in person for, for the Bee Gees. We got six nominations the following year for the Bee Gees. So to have and, and one win. So to have um, this three years in a row for Whitehorse has been really, really, we feel really blessed. Uh, and to uh, swing this back around a bit to uh, like actual, you know, documentary filmmaking, um, I, I'm curious as to what was the uh, first thing uh, that you saw as a, a, doc a documentary or a piece of nonfiction where you said to yourself, I want to either make or be a part of making uh, this type of material, uh, you know, telling stories that have actually happened. And I'll start with you, Samantha. Aha, uh -huh. Jesus Camp. Um, I remember I got it from Blockbuster. I was a bartender and I got it from Blockbuster across the street from the bar. And I took it home and on my DVD player and I watched it three times in a row uh, because I was so like <gasps> amazed and I didn't know, I was so outside that world that it was like so compelling to me. Um, and from that moment on, I was like, I have to do this. I have to be able to show people other worlds and experience other worlds, so yeah. I worked at a video store when that came out on DVD. <laughs> that actually brings up some good memories. Uh, what about you, Sarah? Um, oh, so many great docs. But I will say, Joe Berliger, Bruce Sanofsky, they they hooked me with their work from Brothers Keeper to um, the Paradise Lost films. I think the Paradise Lost films is when I first started at HBO. And I was just blown away by how... Um, you know, tragic, of course, but also just how incredibly riveting it could be to watch real life unfold. So, yeah, it's all and because of Joe Berlinger. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe? Um, I don't know how cool this will sound, but I went to TV and film summer camp when I was 16 and they showed us Errol Morris's Vernon, Florida. And at mm -hmm. first I was like, what is this? And I was just it's funny and it's real. And um, it stuck with me till now. And then honestly, I watched Chris Smith's American movie not long after that. And again, just comedy and real and it blew my mind and um, you know, those two are probably the start where it really lodged with me. Yeah. And Michael? I'm going to steal Sarah's and say Brothers Keeper, Joe Berlinger and Bruce Sanofsky. Um, that film was, I, I grew up in a small town in central New York State, and it was filmed, you know, a couple of towns over. So it was a rare occurrence that uh, an art film came to my town. And so um, I remember going to a screening and meeting Bruce Sanofsky and basically stalking him and Joe until they gave me a job as an intern when I moved to New York City. And that's, I started my career with them. But Brothers Keeper is still my favorite documentary. And what about you, Jeannie? 
For me, it was Errol Morris films. Um, it's it's so true between Thin Blue Line and um, I'm going to lose think of Fog of War. I mean, that was my um, making documentaries that could change the way you you know look at life um, and highlight something. Um, uh, it, it just it blew my mind and um, and you know what I was. Uh, one of one of our my dad's closest friends, um, Sidney Galanti, was a documentary filmmaker, and he did a lot, made a lot of his money doing um, political ads. And he leaned he he leaned he leaned left. I hope that's not going to ruin anything here, but um, he did. And um, he uh, he he the way he told a story about um, a, a, in a in a small political ad back in the day, um, and he opened my eyes up to uh, to uh, changing the world for a better place. And even though it, you know you 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 can't you th when you throw politics into a story and you think politics in a better place, and in at that time it certainly was. I'm uh, you know this we're talking about uh, you know 1970s and so uh, yeah. Well, um, uh, to, to this group, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best. And uh, thank you, thank you to the viewers for joining us for this panel. Uh, meet the experts with documentary filmmakers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.